All right. So once again, thank you, Heather and Jewel, for being on this call to brainstorm vendor events. Uh, it's a pretty relaxed call. It should take about 30 minutes, maybe 25, 30 minutes, unless more people join. My add to it a little bit. Um, but just a quick outline of what we're going to do. First thing we'll do is I'm going to open the policies and procedures and just do a quick overview of some of the rules that Epicure has for us for vendor events. Some of them, like they change from time to time, right? And I just, it's important to go over these before you do an event. So I thought we'd start the call with an overview of the policies and procedures, and then we can get to chatting. So policies and procedures, that'll take us about five minutes. Then we can chat about, uh, we'll start with what uh, to bring and what to focus on, hey, Cassandra, um, how to make the most of these events, like while you're at the event, and how to find them. That's like, that'll be a big one for us, I think. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and show you how to find the policies and procedures because sometimes my Epicure can uh, seem overwhelming. Okay. Are you seeing my screen all right? Perfect. Okay. Um, so I'll just share, I'll show you how to find it. So if you go to the menu on the left, and click business tools you can either click that directly or the drop down there documents and forms and then near the top the third from the top is policies and procedures and this is cool because it's clickable so if you look over at 4.7 you'll see promoting your business at public venues and vendor events and it brings you right to it okay oh right to it <laughs> Uh, so I'll do this overview and then we'll uh, I'll let everyone introduce themselves and share if you've done a vendor event or um, if you're new to it, maybe you have with a different company that you've been with, but yes. So Epicure consultants are permitted to sell current Epicure products at craft fairs, trade shows, other public venues. Be sure to follow local guidelines for health regulations, like especially if you're planning on sampling food there. Um, and at all times when booking and working shows, remember to abide by the Epicure caring and sharing philosophy. Public venues are an opportunity to book events, it says cooking classes, and gain business leads, but should not be relied upon to sustain your business. Follow-up is a key ingredient to your business success. Remember that promoting your business at a public venue can be costly and time-consuming, so it's important that you're st strategic in your show selection. So some examples of public venues or consumer shows include, these are the ones that we're allowed to do, business fairs, trade shows, home shows, women's shows, bridal shows, health and wellness fairs, career or employment fairs, craft fairs, indoor markets. Um, yes, so consultants may provide a product display, conduct a draw, provide samples for tasting. They may take catalog orders for delivery at a future date share the Epicure business opportunity, and sell current Epicure products. This is where you have to kind of be careful because we're not supposed to sell products that are no longer in our lineup in our current catalog. So unacceptable locations, This may some of these may surprise people, so I'd like to really go over these, but unacceptable locations include, but not limited to, garage sales, regardless, regardless of the location and frequency, flea markets, swap meets, farmer's markets, inside of any retail location during regular store hours. So if that's a permanent store, a permanent fixture, you can't sell there or any recurring location. Um, even if it's just, even if you're just participating one time, if it's like a farmer's market, for example, and they have those more than four times a year, four times a year or more, you're not permitted to even attend only once. We're not just not allowed. I guess it gives a, uh, it says here, Epicure defines a recurring venue as any event that occurs on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis. Venues that occur with that frequency can negatively impact the ability of consultants in a given area to grow their Epicure business. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, you can go on and read about um, like procedures when you're working vendor events, but I think we'll get to chatting now. So any questions, though, before I stop sharing my page? Anything that surprised you there with the unacceptable locations? All right, if anyone's watching the replay and has questions, just reach out. You can comment on this post, which will help bump it up and more people will see it, or you can message us privately. Miranda, just to confirm, um, obviously 
uh, I'm at my store. It's not including your book. Like you could put your book out, right? With it yeah. has nothing. Just not products, of course. Exactly. Just not products. You can share your book, though, with your information on it and leave those places oh. for sure. So no uh, Montreal steak spice with your tax order or suit order. <laughs> <laughs> Joke. I don't think that counts. That's not a vendor event, though. <laughs> True. I get it. <laughs> Jewel, what's up? Mm. You're muted. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> okay. um, so a lot of events now are becoming more repetitive because, you know, like the mom markets and stuff like that. So it's making it like, so we're not allowed to be in any of those then or? <sighs> it's it's silly and it's not something I totally agree with <laughs> on Epicure's part. <laughs> I'm sure they have their reasons, but if that, um, if that, market is recurring like four times a year and it's called like it's the same thing same location then yeah we're not allowed to if it's four times a year or more even if we were just to go in at once ourselves like like even as a wow okay. i know that's really tricky it is yeah like you said a lot of people a lot of places are doing it like I know Allison struggles with this she lives in a town and they have a recurring market I think it's like five times a year and it would be such a great opportunity but yeah I just I wish there was a way to share it like you're only allowed to once a year at that particular yeah. market because then it would still leave the door open for someone else to do it at another time right like if you and then even if you submitted that contract or something to say okay I've done this market so that's it or yeah I don't know. Yeah, a loophole would be if they didn't, I think if they, if they don't advertise that they're going to do it, like if they don't advertise a post with here are our markets for the year, and you just see that ad, and it's only the advertisement for that, and you look on their website, they don't have the other dates listed, then to me, in my mind, that's not a recurring event. That's, they haven't shared future dates. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so maybe I know some ladies missed our over so what we're doing today is we just went over our policies and procedures quickly um what we're going to chat now about is we're going to go around if you want to share if you've done a vendor event before or if you plan to um just introduce yourself tell us a little bit about your experience with vendor events and it doesn't have to be vast mine isn't vast i i haven't done very many vendor events that's why i'm super looking forward to this chat today um, but then we'll talk about what to bring and what to focus on when you're at the event how to make the most of your event and how to find them. All right, anyone want to uh, introduce themselves first? I can, it looks like Heather's gonna go. That would be perfect if you're going to, no? Okay, um, my name is Cassandra Timbano. I am a leader with Epicure and on the Druso organization. Um, I do quite a bit of vendor events. I've been able to snag a couple. So a little bit of this, what you're saying, Miranda, is definitely something that I'm going to have to look into for myself because there is one, but um, I might be safe because it's, there's only a couple and then they change the name of it. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I might be okay because then they make it a week long thing, which I'm not in that one or like four or five days anyway. So yeah, we obviously have to watch what Epicure uh, is allowing us to do. Um, a couple of things because I have been doing more and more. I'm really trying to look at how people are looking at our products when they walk up to our booth. If it's too overwhelming, if, if, if I'm able to display it in the best way possible, and I know some of you guys, and maybe I could share it with, um, you know, um, a picture with the this underneath the chat or whatever, um, of about those, uh, I think they were like uh, four by six little placement cards I made, like the burger spices. And I put like a picture of the burger salad bar, um, wing night. That way, when people walk up, it's a little bit more relatable to them. Like if they like wing night with their kids and their family, it's like, oh, there you go. Because as you guys know, we do offer so much. Um, there it is right there. Exactly. So I've made up like a bunch of those. Of course, I want to change some for like burger and fry night. Like how awesome would that be? Right. So I'm actually working on a couple right now. And I've been like, sometimes things just come to me because I do think about this a lot, but I think this is going to be key. And I tested it out on my last vendor event um, where I had 
more products or more quantity of one product. So for instance, like I had the cheesy fry, instead of showing like literally one of everything that we have to offer, which could be overwhelming, I had about, I think four or five cheesy fries, three Cajun fries, and I displayed it in a way of like to showcase them a bit better. And I find people were like going towards like the bulk, the bulk, the bulk. So what I might do is focus more on uh, the spring season at the booth, but go a little bit heavier into it. So if you guys are okay, I'm just going to flip my camera around because I'm working on a graphic right now and make it a little bit more relatable. So if I were to do almost like what Heather do there, so that's just me holding the strawberry margarita. So do that. Oh, now how do I go back? Uh, um, so doing something like that, but then putting about four to six of those strawberry margaritas in front of that, I think people will be like, oh, I could see myself having that. You know what I mean? And this is our spring collection. Of course, we have the whole entire catalog to, you know, for people to dive into. And then wing night, have your kids with stuff all over their face, eating wings of a picture of that. Do you know what I mean? So that's where I'm kind of thinking, like, that's where my booth is going to kind of go. Um, and then ballots are huge. Getting those ballots where you could follow up with people. Um, Epicure, I don't know if I'm talking too much, Miranda, so please cut me off. <laughs> well, what we're going to do, Cassandra, we're just introducing ourselves right now oh. and sharing. If... <laughs> no, but you still you still shared great tips, so I love it. Um, and if anyone else when they introduce themselves wants to do that too, I'm not trying to stop you. I just, I thought we're just introducing ourselves really quick and say kind of what kind of events you've done. You haven't done anything wrong at all. Okay. I could listen to you for an hour speak on this and get so many tips, so... <laughs> okay, sorry. No, don't be sorry. I, I love it. Um, who wants to introduce themselves next? <laughs> I can go next and I'm just as long-winded as Cassandra. So <laughs> just mute me when you need to. Ooh, uh, you I'm Heather. I'm, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> uh, I'm Heather from Sunbury. Uh, I think I've met most of you. Uh, I really have kind of shifted my focus of my business to vendor events. I know that the policy and procedure thing said it's not a way to sustain your business. I've found it's been incredible for me. Um, I'm not getting a lot of, um, from my VIP group, I'm not getting a lot of future bookings or people interested in the business opportunity. So I decided to shift my focus into these events. And I'm doing, my original goal was to do one a month. And I started that back in October of last year. Um, move, that continued through kind of the winter. I was doing about one a month. And just this last month has been, things are really picking up with the spring and, and summer vendor events getting rolling. Um, and I just did over, I'm kind of in the middle of it right now. I'm going to have five over five weekends. So I'm taking this coming weekend off, but I've got two booked next weekend. I've done three, the last three weekends. It's been, it's been really busy, but it's been a lot of fun. So I'll shut up now and no. I'll share my tips later. <laughs> No, thank you for sharing that. And Heather, when you first started, you had told me your social circle was small. I think these vendor events that you're doing is helping you grow and has helped you grow and be consistent in your business. So a thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. All right. Who's going next to introduce themselves? I will. Hi, I'm Jenna. I can go next because I have to go soon. Oh, okay. Julia, you go. Okay. Um, I can't remember what I'm saying, but I'm Julia and I'm in Thunder Bay. Um, I've just started trying to do vendor events too, um, because I'm trying to get new people in my business and I'm at work. So the bell's going to ring in five minutes. So I'm going to go. That's it. Awesome. Thank you for being here on your break. That's awesome. Okay. We'll go Jenna Jewel. Okay. My name is Jenna. I'm in Trent Lakes and I have started doing vendor events since I joined. So I've been doing them for a year. when it took it up a level and I'm starting to plan vendor events um, as well as, um, you know, participating in them because I live in a very small area where they're kind of few and far between. So I'm stepping it up and taking, you know, the reins and making it happen. That is amazing. I remember you asking me, kind of picking my brain about a year ago about just planning your own vendor event. And it's such a good point and such a good thing to do if you're struggling to find them. You can always find people who like sell, have something to sell and have something that they want to showcase. So if you could just find a legion or find a school gym to rent, like it's really, really easy. It runs itself. 
you just worry about your own table and it runs itself. So that's awesome. I can't wait to hear more about that. And Jenna, I think it was you who gave me the idea to showcase my meal solution packets in a shoe holder. That was you, right? Yeah. I just thought it was so genius. So thank you for that idea. Um, I love our order. Yeah, I want to on that. Everybody loves that. Yeah, it's just such a great way for shoppers to be able to find what they're looking for. Awesome. Thank you for introducing yourself. Oh, I have ahead. a question. Sure. Um, Jenna, I love that you're running your own events. I think that's incredible. I always see your posts about them. It's so exciting. I absolutely love it. So great job. Um, I have a question though. So with running your own events, if you start doing them five, six times a year, is the trick to just change the name so that you're not considered a recurring event? Is that a dumb question? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Cassandra's laughing at me. No. <laughs> No, it's not a dumb question. I've only done two. And um, I did start, like Miranda said, trying to do it a year ago, but I was stopped because of insurance. We do get insurance through Epicure, but as a host of an event, you have to be very careful where you're hosting the event that there's insurance there, or it's up to like a thousand dollars. It's just so it was dead in the water to me at that until um, I have a neighbor who's pampered chef. So I had to shift to her when I wanted to plan. So she reached out to me then and we're finding ways to go about it and finding venues that we can do it in. So I do have a partner that helps me out, which is great. Um, so we've only done two. They've both been in different locations. We don't have a name of our, like, what we're running kind of thing. So it's not reoccurring at this time. Whether it will be in the same location or not, I'm not sure. We're planning one for the fall, probably around Christmas time as well. So not sure of venue just yet, but yeah. Did I answer the question or did I just go rambling on about something else? No, no, that, that's good. And that that's made sense. And I, I guess it was just to clarify, right? Like from a policy perspective, as long as it's not the same location, same name, you would be okay. Yeah, okay. you right. find someone different to fundraise for uh, as opposed to fundraising for the same organization and um, we'll get we can go back to this more later but um, with insurance like I found school gyms the school if you're fundraising for the school they have insurance that covers those kinds of events legion as well if you're making that as a fundraiser for the legion meaning the vendors fees go to them then they have their right. own insurance but yeah definitely something to that you've got to watch out for all right, Jewel, tell us about yeah. you. Hi, so I've actually only, oh, I'm Jewel and I'm in Orangeville, Ontario. And um, I've just been with Epicure for just over a year now. And I've only done the one event with Epicure a couple of weeks ago. And it was a learning curve for me. Um, it wasn't a very busy, like it wasn't a very well attended event, but I did okay. Um, I had one customer that actually bought a bunch of my bulk items and then she actually placed an order as well so that was really nice um and then i also had someone else that i was speaking to call me up out of the blue she was looking for a, a quick gift for somebody and so we at the last minute threw something together and she came and picked it up so that was kind of cool too that i was able to do that as well so making those connections is definitely um something i'm looking forward to to building my small group right at the moment to make it a bit larger so um, I was pretty excited about that. Um, I have another one coming up the, the July 1st weekend. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. So, Oh, that's so great. And it just shows you that you might not have very many people or very many connections, but it just takes a couple meeting at just the right people, right? And forming right. those relationships. And it's not always sales, like sales shouldn't be our primary goal for these events because that's quick. Yes, you might make a quick buck, but if you can make in connections with people, like if they just buy one marinara jar and then you never see them again, that's of almost no use to you. But if you can form that connection and then they're a recurring customer or an ambassador on your team, it's uh, it's wonderful, right? So got to, and we'll chat about different things to focus on, whether it's bookings or um, growing your team at these events. But yeah, yeah. One can other I quick... share? Oh, go ahead, Jules. Oh, 
just one other quick thing, um, just a little bit about what Cassandra had said too about, you know, trying to showcase one of everything. I was new at it and I was kind of doing that. I kind of had a little bit of everything and then I had my stock kind of off to the side. I think I'm definitely going to reverse that, <laughs> put my stock up and then just showcase a couple of things or whatever. So. That's, yeah, I'm that's guilty. Yeah. I'm guilty of uh, my table just having tons of product and it sells a lot. Like in my town, I, I can make a thousand dollars in sales at these events. So it, it's hard for me not to do that. But mm -hmm. do I want to focus on just sales? Do I want to have more events booked and fundraisers booked and right? Sure. Like you got to really choose here what to do. When your stock's getting a little big and you need to get it lowered a little bit, yep. <laughs> then it's beneficial. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Can I share a quick story about making connections and it not being about the sale? Absolutely. So this this last weekend I was at an event and it was a total flop. Like I think we had maybe 60 people through the door. It was it was not not a great event. And I'm not placing blame anywhere. It just it didn't go well. Um so a lot of vendors started packing up. So the event ended at three and a lot of people were packing up like around 215, 230. People started packing up and were leaving. They were, they were over it. And I get that. I do. But I was talking with my table neighbor anyway. And we were like, no, we're sticking it out for three. We'll stay. We got a little bit of a rush to people. And I'm talking like maybe five groups of people through the door. But I mean, considering how the day went, it wasn't bad. Um, around 240. And they were kind of mulling around and looking at what was left as people were packing up around them. Like what an insult when you show up to an event that says it's running till three and everybody's just packing up around you. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I decided I would stick it out till three. I wasn't packing up until three. And I was near the end of the circuit when these two older ladies came around and they started asking me some questions. And um, the one lady bought, I think one pack of quick biscuits. So like six bucks, right? But she said she was asking i always tell people when they buy the baking do you know how to cook with gluten-free bake or bake with gluten-free products you know you want to let the batter rest i always make sure to have that conversation and she said i didn't even realize that this was all gluten-free i have two grandchildren who are both gluten-free and then the other lady said oh i know it's so hard cooking for them all um i have a bunch of vegetarians in my family with my kids and so we had a whole conversation about how epicure can help support dietary restrictions, whether it's the gluten-free or the, you know, vegetarian that we have so many vegetarian recipes, adaptations on our stuff. They grabbed six catalogs to hand out to all of their children, grandchildren type generations. And yeah, I only made a $6 sale and there's no guarantee that would have happened at all. But I talked to these ladies and now they're handing my catalog out to people who need our product. It's not just a, a want, right? Or a like the flavor. So you know, it's, it is, it's about those connections and where it'll go down the road. Oh, that's amazing. Like, imagine you would have packed up because everybody else was, right? Such a good point. Stick it out until the end time. Like, you've committed yourself to that time anyways. And what's an extra 20 minutes going to get you? You know, mm -hmm. by the time you pack up and go home, you're just going to unpack and do the same thing anyway. Like, yeah. you're already there. Just tough it out. I love that advice. That's I'm so glad you big $6 that. sale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So does anyone like now I think Cassandra, this is where you were going to right with with what to focus on. So you mentioned your signs. Please talk to us now. Don't be shy. Tell us more. Oh my gosh. I think I, I just miss everyone. I haven't been on a call in a while. So I was like, really, I actually wrote down some notes coming to this call, super excited. And then I get <laughs> cut. Um, it's, I'm joking. sorry. It's never a bad thing when people contribute. It's coming to a call and then no one says anything. So I felt bad even stopping you, but I thought, well, we should introduce oh, this. No, you need to have some music to play in the background, like in the awards ceremonies when people won't <laughs> stop talking, you can yes. start playing some music and slowly turn the volume up. <laughs> Don't get yeah. me started on Zoom and music right now, though. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Cassandra. Yeah. So I think I was just going, like, making sure that you have ballots at your booth. Like, um, it, when you oh, sorry, I keep getting a call. When you were in the, it was saying you're allowed to um, do a draw or a small gift. You can make a little basket up of, you know, the season. I actually um, like to promote the Epic Box at my events. Um, at the top of 
their ballots in and I say, would you like to win a, a box filled with goodies? You're not saying you're giving the box, the Epic box away, um, but it could be just like stock that you have a little bit extra of and you just put it into the Epic box and gift it to that family. Um, obviously you're at a local event. So fingers crossed the people that, uh, somebody that wins it would be local because you don't want to start shipping boxes and stuff. Um, but in my case, it's always worked out that I drop it off, you know, with your card and everything, but making sure you have ballots, Epic, Epic here has them in the back office. Um, it's really exciting when you get home and you get to see. So on my ballot right here, it just asks a couple of questions. Are you interested in hosting a tasty party? Yes, maybe no um, about the business the fundraiser, the Epic Box subscription, and then uh, a customer loyalty program that can kind of be what you want it to be. Um, it could be your Facebook group. And then it just um, says them about Facebook. But these are like super important and exactly what Heather was talking about. It's about the connection. Um, I always, if I can, at the booth, if you've had a conversation with somebody about um, a health restriction, anything like that, allergies, write it on the back. When you're following up with these people, you're going to go right back to that conversation. This is, you know, you were, you had onion, uh, dietary restriction. Here's the onion graphic when you're shopping on my website or, um, Hey, we talked about your grandkids coming over on the weekend. You have a gluten-free, like, do you know what I mean? Like bring it right back to where you left it. It's super important. And sometimes I'll even sneak when they go to put it in the ballot box, I'll wait till they walk away, pull it out, write my notes on their ballot, put it back in because I really want to make that connection. And it helps me put a face to that ballot, which is super important for connection. That's what it's all about. Um, I agree it. That's exactly what it is. I've sponsored people from, um, trade shows or you know vendor events i've um you know grown my team from them parties that's where i gain parties and my database is actually i know it's for people that are just starting their epicure business they're not seeing the bigger picture just keep going building those connections getting those ballots getting those names and will they all become customers that shop every single month absolutely not even if you have 700 in your database you may only get two or three that shop every month but it will carry through your business. It will, yeah, just keep going. <laughs> I have a question for you, Cassandra. So my first couple of events that I was doing, I was doing the Epic Box and three times I was giving it away and I emailed and texted the person and nothing. They just never oh. got back to me. So I was like, do I draw again? And then what if they never, what if this other person does reach back out? Like I have not had success with that. So you know I, 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 have you had any issues or do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I actually, you know what I do try to do now? I send them. So sometimes what I do is I actually go live in my VIP group to do the draw. And I will take, you know how you find that link for that specific post? I will get that link and I will put that into their um, text message or into their email and say, here is the draw live. Uh, congratulations to the winner. And I, sometimes I don't even say whether or not they've been the winner. Like if it's the winner, I do, but for the other people, I don't say who the winner was. It kind of gains some like kind of anticipation and then they go into your group and hopefully they kind of want to mm -hmm. join you and stuff like that. But absolutely you're putting the kind of the, the onus on them, like to reach out to you if you've done your right. job. And so, I mean, yeah. Right. And don't be afraid like, I don't know if this is unethical, but don't be afraid to rig a draw if there's somebody who is a potential for you. Like, you know, they're on the fence, maybe about joining your team, maybe about they just liked everything there. I don't, you don't really have to rig a draw. You can do the draw ethically. I mean, most people want you to do it at the event, but afterwards, you there's nothing stopping you from being able to contact every person and say um although you didn't mean win the main prize you won five dollars off of your next order or whatever you want to get that's what i was gonna say yeah that's what i was doing with some of my uh, initial events was um i was emailing everybody of course you reach out to everybody to get files from if they hadn't checked if they're interested in a fundraiser or, or, or whatever i was adding some information about that but i always started with something like um it, it was worded better, but you weren't the winner of the Epic Box. However, I'd like to offer you 10% off your next order from my website and trying to draw people in that way. So that way, everybody's a winner. Um, to your point, you know, it, and to circle back and round to Cassandra's point about putting the notes on the back, I actually don't have a draw box that people put their stuff in. They hand me the ballots. So then I can write a quick note and then I stick it in the bag or I hold up a gift bag and they put it in and then I can grab it off the top really quick. 
So the same idea to write those notes because you, you've made a connection. You want to maintain that connection. Great idea. So I want to show, um, especially for people who haven't used these before, but under documents and forms, so same place that we found the policies and procedures, business tools, documents and forms, scroll down and you will find a ballot. There's one with a wish list or just this one here, the door prize slips. So you're, it's like a big missing at your event if you don't have these because you're not going to remember to or have time to offer all of these opportunities to people, but they will certainly fill in this form if there's a chance to win something. And um, what I like to do is have these on a clipboard. I'm standing in front of my table. I'm never sitting behind the table in a chair because how are you forming connections that way, right? Stand the whole time if you can, or have a chair out in front off to the side a little bit if you physically can't stand, but you wanna be present be as forward as you can face-to-face -face with these people. So have this clipboard and hand it to them, have them fill it out. And then like Heather said, they hand it back to you. you I love, I've never uh, written notes on the back, but you think you're going to remember people's names or, you know, something they said to you. You won't. By the end of the day, you've peopled so hard that you will not. So have the, I think it's genius to write little reminder notes that way when you connect with them, they will just not be able to believe that you remembered them, that you remembered that tiny little yeah. detail, you know, like that is good customer service. So since I had kind of a flop with giving away my epic boxes, I've shifted now and I have a little, you know, the board with the words you can, or the letters you can create your own little thing. I have leave your name, take a tea. And I have the current tea bags all out around it. So if somebody fills out the form, they can take a tea sample to, to try um, instead of doing a draw because I just wasn't seeing the results from, from the draw, but I might shift and do both. Yeah, I mean, you still you have their contact info, so you can still offer exactly. the $5 yeah. off or the welcome 15. So Julia, I know Julia is <clears> teaching <throat> and that's awesome that she was able to join us for her break. But Julia has on the back of her business cards written the welcome 15 promo code. So if you talk to anyone who is new to Epicure, they need to know about that 15% off of any order, no minimum, that's still valid. Like that Epicure, that wasn't just a one month thing. We're keeping this for a while until maybe we find out it does or doesn't work. Um, but yeah, like how awesome that that person can now, they have your website, they have their promo code. You need their information though. You need their contact information still, and you need to write on the back, gave promo code, and then reach out to them and say, hey, uh, do you have any questions about how to use your promo code? But imagine five people used your code at an event. Like, that's awesome. Jewel, what's up? Um, I just actually had a new person order from me. They got over the $100. So not only did they get the 15% off, they got the free shipping too. So that was amazing and, for them. And the free gift with purchase. Yes, yes, that as well, as well, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jewel, I have a big favor to ask you. Do you think sure. you could, if you have five minutes, could you post that in our org group that you, that, that happened? Sure, yeah, awesome. absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Even grab a screenshot of the order from your, your back office to show how much they got for such a great deal, right? Like we do it a lot with our host orders to show how great it is to host, but even that yeah. is, that's huge. Yep. Yeah. It was awesome. It was pretty exciting. <laughs> oh, that's super exciting. Congratulations. All right. Um, okay. So what to bring, what to focus on. I've admitted that I bring way too much. I'm going to maybe narrow that down. I love having the meal solutions displayed. Um, those are really an easy seller. People love that mix and match. And I don't know, there's nothing in the policies and procedures, I don't think, that says that we can't mix and match. Um, it's a gray, it's a gray area, but I say go for it. If Epicure personally tells you that you can't, yeah, I don't know. I say go for it. Um, one thing we're not supposed to do at vendor events is discount items. They're supposed to be catalog prices. Um, so you can do some quick math with even have your back office opened if you're looking for the price of what something would be with shipping and tax and um, have that on your ticket. So it might on your like sale price or whatever. Um, yeah, you'll get to know that that seems overwhelming at first, but most tall jars are the same price. Most dips are the same price. So it's not as hard, but Jewel. Sorry, um, do, do we have to put the shipping and tax on that? Can we, or do we have to add that as well? 
you don't have you can add it at the event if you want to do the math like, there but if you want to just have the prices all like but do we have to include it or is that considered part of a discount if we don't exactly you have yeah, yeah. okay Miranda, can I just clarify when I said about um, showcase in the season, I definitely like mean that I think that would be amazing, but don't get me wrong. Like, will I have my spice rack of all my herbs and spices still there? Absolutely. I think it is important. People are definitely driven um, for impulse. So a lot of times I have people that want something so bad. And if, if it's not there, like sometimes I'll say like, I have it coming this week. Like it'll be at your doorstep. I'll do a porch drop off. Cause people like that porch drop off. If you say you'll meet them. No, no, no. You know, say porch drop off. Oh, you do at my porch. You don't see me perfect. You know, like, cause people are like that. Right. Yeah. So the keywords, um, but honestly, like I'll still have a lot of other stuff at my thing because I know people will buy because there is a lot but I think I'm just going to showcase like some of the main season collections a little bit better um mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. I, yeah. and yeah, to feed makes... off of your idea with all the pictures what I want to do I haven't done this yet but it's kind of my my next step I want to get a digital picture frame and get upload pictures like that and the host special for the month, the ambassador program, all the different graphics mm -hmm. and kind of have them on a slow rotation on a digital um, picture frame because then I can change them. I have printouts of everything and every month I'm printing new graphics, burning my ink, laminating paper, everything. Like it's, it's, it isn't cost efficient. So I'm thinking the investment in a decent digital camera, obviously I'd have to make sure it's battery, not electric. Like there's some stuff to consider there. So it'll probably end up being a bit of an investment, but I think long-term doing that. And then, like you said, Cassandra, you can showcase those pictures, like that beautiful picture of you holding the, the drink and the, the strawberry margarita, your kids with the wing sauce all over your face. Like those are like, you have those kind of come up in between and it'll really, I think, catch attention mm -hmm. and, uh, take up less space too than like, I love your thing, your images. I have them all over my table a lot of the time too, but I think it might help kind of consolidate it and have it just there. Yeah, for sure. I love that digital frame idea. And then, you know, in the long run, you're going to save rather than printing every single time you do an event and printing all the promos, like it's even good for, right. um, person in person, any kind of in-person event, just to have that there. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea too, just because people might stay at your booth a little bit longer <laughs> uh -huh. to see what's next. Yeah. 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 I actually, I, I'm kind of half stealing the idea. I can't take full credit. There was a lady at one of the events that I was at recently with, she had a tablet and it was kind of flipping through some pictures and then she would use it. If somebody had some questions about the website, she had the website pulled up behind the slideshow and then she would just tap on the tablet and show people, this is how you navigate the website. These are all the options we have on the website and that kind of stuff. But I just thought it was a great way to, with the, it's basically a slideshow, right? Of all of those graphics rolling through was a great way to showcase things and uh, show your, not just the products, but the offers, right? Like you can't have everything on your table, no matter how hard we try. <laughs> you know, I always struggle to make sure you get the, the Epic box and the fundraising kit, but people don't even understand what it is, even though you have the print out there. They're like, oh, I can buy these and they're going through your Epic box. And it's like, no. <laughs> so. Oh. For sure. Um, it's good to know, like to try to record your inventory ahead of time and after and see what your most popular sellers were. Not that those will necessarily always be, you'll find it changes, um, but there are staples like guacamole. Um, I find anything <laughs> for chicken really sells, but, and I loved Cassandra's idea before to kind of categorize and have like a little picture that says, products for chicken and it has those around it because people will gravitate to what they um what they like to eat at home oh, julia says i just called all my ballots oh like all her names from the ballots and offered the secondary prize of 15 percent off their next order very cool especially since most of them will be new customers to you you need to use the epic 15 and it doesn't come out of your pocket and yeah. if you are returning customers then you, you know you bite the bullet on that exactly Yes, no, that hasn't been shared. And you know what, like, it seems like a steeper discount, but that person has never shopped from you before. Now they have, and they'll probably shop again. So as long as you do your follow up, <laughs> as long as you do your follow up, yeah, get them in your VIP group. Um, you know, get them on if you have an email list. However, you need to make sure you're staying like building that relationship, but I like it. 
going back to your I, um, oh, go ahead I just want to pop in really quick I did some QR codes one for my Facebook group and one for my website I printed them on an 8 by 10 and I wrote like what each QR code was for and to try to get people into my VIP group you can put in join my VIP group for a special offer I thought that special offer could be that epic 15 code I like it a way to kind of get them into your group and you know seeing everything that's going on was one thought but I like having the QR codes on the table yeah that's a really really good idea um there are websites that just you type in QR code generator and they just make them for you for free right you just add your website you can do it on Canva too can oh Canva does them yeah, yeah. Canva because I actually did incentives for my team this is the lesson to be learned I made, did incentives for my team, make beautiful keychains with all their QR codes. Yeah. And I did it on a free thing and they came back. That was like a trial and all their QR cards don't work because I didn't pay $50 a month. So they get you use Canva. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And Canva, you can do your Facebook VIP group too. Yeah. You just copy the link and pop it in there. Yeah. Thought was if there. you're doing PayPal for a, a payment option, like I know some people do e-transfers and, and PayPal as payment options, you can do a PayPal um, QR code as well for payments. They can just snap it mm -hmm. cool. and it sends a payment. That's awesome. I've never thought of doing a QR code. Thanks for sharing that, Jenna. And speaking of inventory and uh, payment options, <laughs> Jenna and I have been working a lot together to uh, to maximize the use of our square. I don't know if anybody else uses Square, um, but Jenna put a tip in one of, I think it might've been in my post about how do you set up your table or somewhere anyway, and we started the conversation. But um, I went through during one of my uh, events during a quieter time, I put all my inventory in Square. So now even if I get a cash sale, um, I'm putting in, I'm selecting what they bought and then putting in cash, cal calculate your change and everything for you if you, if you struggle with that part. Um, but then you can go to the, you have to go to the desktop version and there's a spot in your items where it lists all of your inventory. <clears throat> and then when I'm doing my reorders, I don't have to be going through all my bins of stuff. I can just go there and, okay, I need two more guacamoles. Okay, I need, and it, it's not just looking at what you sold, but how much stock of each thing do you want to carry? And it can tell you exactly how many um, of everything you have. And you can set up alerts for low stock for different things at different points. I, I find it really useful. And with the Square, it was a one-time purchase for my little square reader I want to say it was 60 bucks but maybe slightly more and now I can accept the payments there's not a big fee with the um like the interchange fee with getting the the um the payments out I'm super impressed with square I'm not pushing it on anybody but uh that's I'll just tell you to be careful with square because I've been banned for life from it yeah <laughs> like they will not let me and I've never used it fraudulently um <clears throat> but they're instead of like it has the reader, right? Like to swipe the card, do that. So mine's an insert or a tab. Those yeah. are my options. Yeah. Okay, do that. I was not swiping because I, the very first time I tried it, it wasn't working for me. And I felt like swiping it more than once just seems in front of a customer you've never met. It just felt weird. It wasn't working. So I was just started, I got in the habit of typing the credit card number into the Square app. And I think mm -hmm. they saw that as fraudulent or possibly fraudulent. So they've cut me off, banned me for life. So use it like to actually tap or insert the card back then. I wonder if it's because you were doing it once in a while and a large volume. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're only doing it at vendor events once a month or once every two months and it's a hundred transactions in a day, that does look suspicious. It, I, can, I can understand, but I'm sorry to you, man. <laughs> yeah, it would have been helpful for them to tell me why. They said, we don't owe you any explanation. We're not telling you why. They made me feel like a criminal. They're not, uh, we're not telling you why we're cutting you off, but you can never be a Square member again for your life. <laughs> Did you see Julia's comment? She got booted too, but she signed up on her different email address. With a, another email address. Oh, to get back on? To get back on to Square. I, I, you're probably a little bit dated and I don't want to, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's fantastic. I, I love it. I, I don't have ever manually enter. We do the, there's a, it's just a little square, both this big, and you can either insert the card or tap it. Yeah. And it works on my phone. It's been working great for me. So. Well, I may, uh, I may go with my Gmail account and try it again. Cool. Yeah, I did. I, and really like, it was like, oh, this is a great way to accept payments. That's fantastic. But once Jenna gave me the idea of storing all my inventory, it has made my life so much easier. Like I was trying to pack up at events and know what do I need to reorder? And it was just, 
again, just looking to save time. We're all too busy to be spending time going through boxes and trying to know what we need to reorder. So anything like that, that helps is huge for me. That's awesome. Is Square effective in the US? If we bring our Square there, can US cards use it? I don't know. know. You'd have to look probably, but you'll look into how much you're going to pay for the foreign currency exchange because that might not be worth it to you. But also e-transfers won't work in the US if you're down there. No, it's PayPal. I know you're looking at some events down there, but I feel like Square is international. I just don't know how much they're going to ding you. Yeah. Like the fees are good. Again, if you're going to use Square, if you haven't set it up before, make sure you have it switched that it's not going to automatically transfer the money into your bank account. Mm-hmm. You do it manually because they charge you another, I think it's 1% to do it automatically. Just little things like that. They can start that up, but yeah. Yeah. I didn't know this either until after if Heather or I were to refer you to Square and you signed up, I think each of us would get a thousand transactions with no fees. So that's something to think about too. If anybody wants to sign up, reach out to somebody and see, and then it can save, you know, that too. It's, it's not a lot for the fees, but you know. Yeah, it helps. Every, it helps. Every little bit, helps. yeah. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So we've chatted about lots, but I want to, before we're done, chat about how you're finding vendor events. Um, I use Google a lot, but I find it tough. Uh, Do you guys have any tips for how you're finding these? So I started out by finding, excuse me, one person who I went to one of their events and I really enjoyed it. So I kind of got a hold of them and then joined a few of theirs. Um, And then I did the same thing with a second lady. So I've kind of got two ladies that I sort of follow and go to to the majority of their events in different locations, not recurring. (laughs) Um, And, uh, and so I kind of do that. Um, But also talking to other vendors has been huge. So this last weekend, again, it was a bit of a a bust for the, the actual event, but I got chatting with the lady next to me and she's actually from Timmins. So I'm from Sudbury. She's from Timmins. She drove all the way down to, it was in Sturgeon Falls, this event. Um, and she drove all that way, but we were chatting and then we connected on Facebook and she's going to an event next Sunday. And she was like, Heather, are you coming to this one? And she tagged me in the post when she was sharing it. And I messaged the lady and said, you still have space? And she said, yep. So it's all, again, all about connections. And it's not just about your sales or your future sales or your future party bookings. It's everything, right? The full gamut. Just talk to other people. Yeah, no kidding. That's so important. If you're having, if it's slow at your event, you should be forming those relationships with other vendors. Go to their table, Mm -hmm. chat them up, ask them if they know of any other vendor events. That's brilliant. Try not to spend more than you make. (laughs) Number do not well I say that lightly because we should support other people but I the same thing it is hard um rule of thumb like try to stay at your vendor vent or your booth at the beginning and then you're too busy packing up at the end um but it is I mean that's where our biggest connections are our other vendors right everyone is our customer so it's very really important um I just I just go online um with local groups Um, post a lot about vendor events there's about three or four actual vendor um, groups around this uh, specific area and that's kind of where I find it and then just getting to know which ones really work for you Uh, there's this one that she posted yesterday it's for like it's in October but her events are ridiculous and I'm trying to she you have to wait and she'll post and then it's like first come first serve and it's so stressful I'm like, I need this event. So I private message her because I want in it, like in, especially with um, uh, companies like ours, they only take one of each, which is understandable, but, and there's so many. So it's like, it's like, um, <laughs> you know, I want it. And, pay off the coordinator with like free Epic year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll send her a message. Wink, wink. <laughs> But you know what, though, it goes back to the connections comment, right? Like, so the holistic healing fair, I think I've shared it with a couple of you guys. I do that every year because she is absolutely incredible. Thousands of people through the door. Like my sales are always through the roof at those ones. So I always do it. And as soon as the schedule comes out, same thing, you have to get your name in. This past year, I submitted my form as soon as the dates came out for the events I wanted. I submitted my form and then she'll usually review and she'll get back to you. And then once you pay, your spot's secure. 
well, I had done my part and then I kind of let it go as like, okay, I'll get to that when I get to it, right? We're all busy. I was in the grocery store one day and she messaged me and she said, Heather, I have another Epicure rep looking to get in. If you send your payment now, I'll tell her the spot is already full, but do you still want it? And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in the grocery store trying to send this lady $600 to secure my three weekends that I wanted, but it made my grocery trip very expensive. Um, but because I created that relationship with her and, and had that, that conversation with her, she knew who I was. She wanted me to have the spot compared to somebody she didn't know. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, it's important to form those, again, form the relationships, not just with the other vendors, but the hosts, the customers, everybody, right? Just always be peopling. True. Jewel. I was just curious, what kind of range do you guys think is good to pay for a vendor's fee? Oh, it's a, that's a good question. I mean, these ladies have more experience with vendor events than I do. Um, but ask questions. If you think that fee is a lot, there's a, probably a good reason for it. Ask how many people have come through. Ask to see previous Facebook groups or photos and ask all the questions. And if you could somehow get a hold of another vendor who has been at one of those events, message them and ask them like, okay, what was your experience? Was it worth it? But chances are, if it's a $500 fee, like that's ridiculous. I don't know. I would have a hard time, but is the return back? Like, is the return there? Like, were there 10,000 people that came through? Is it, you know, really well marketed? Is it, a, are there commercials for it? Ask them how they're marketing this event too. What do you ladies yeah. think? No, I agree. And and most, I know I just spouted out that huge number, but the most of my events are uh, around between 30 and 50, depending on you know where they are and, and what's going on. This one, the lady, she travels all over Ontario and she puts on these huge events and it's advertised everywhere. And like thousands of people come through the door. It's, it's worth the, I think it's 125 per day. One of them is a two day. So it, it, anyway, that's why it was such a large amount. I was paying for three different events, one of them being a two day event. So it, it, that's why it was, it was such a high amount. Um, yeah. But to me, those ones are worth it because I make at least a thousand in sales at those, those events. So, but it, to, to Miranda's point, how do you know before you don't, and you, sometimes you just have to, to take the risk. Right. But then you look at it, a 40 or $50 table, where I think Julia said 20 to 40 is kind of her range is that an acceptable risk, right? Mm, yeah. At that point, I think it is. The first time I did the holistic healing fair, I was scared out of my mind. <laughs> like I just spent $125 on this day. What if it's a flog? But it wasn't. And just looking at how she marketed things, you could kind of tell that it was going to be successful, but I'll let somebody else give their feedback. Yeah, no, that's great. I just want to, because, you know, my thoughts go very quickly out of my head. Um, very important coming back to where I said, find them on vendor groups. There are a ton of scammers. So do before you transfer any money, very important. Like people in the area have been ripped off. I've been ripped off one and you can't get your money back. These people are literally, Oh, I have an event here. Call the event space, ask them if they have an, um, an event that day, that's the best way. And you'll know, um, so yeah, that just came to me and that's really important, but yeah, the one Heather's talking about, she goes everywhere. She's here in Windsor, London. Uh, it is here. It's $135. I've still yet to sign up. I am hoping when I do have the funds to do so, um, you know, there's a lot of priorities. Of course, business is one of them. Um, but getting like for me to pay for my conference to go to, is it super important? So I'm trying to like, kind of wiggle my money around a bit, um, but yeah, that one's amazing. And same as Julia, 20 to 50 or 30 to 50 is exactly the range that I pay. And it only takes one customer exactly like Jewel said with that one customer. It literally takes one customer to change everything. And I always find that if you put it out there, you will get that one. You can leave that day skunked, but something will come out of it. Yeah. Just believe it. Yeah. Um, Julia, and for those wins. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was, Julia asked if that holistic fair goes to Thunder Bay. I don't think so. I think it goes as far as Sault Ste. Marie, right? I think so. I was just typing um, back, but uh, I can say it out loud. Uh, I'll look at the schedule and let you know. I'll let everybody know. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll look, I'll talk to her because I'm going to do a couple with her in the fall. She's coming back to Sudbury and Manitoulin. And I'll talk to her and see if she's, I'll tell her I know of people that are interested in seeing it go further north and see if she's interested in expanding for next year. Um, and then let you guys know. I signed up for a Sault Ste. Marie one once and I never heard back. So I just assumed she already had a rep. Aww. That's too bad. She's usually pretty good at getting back to people. Yeah. 
busy land yeah. picture. Heather, um, took one it. thing, I probably took it, yes. <laughs> no, I didn't go that far. <laughs> um, one thing to, to continue on Cassandra's point about, you know, something good will come from it. It's not just about waiting for something good to come from it. Create your own good news coming out of an event, right? Like last weekend, again, was a flop. But looking at it, I made that connection with the lady next to me. I made the connection with those ladies at the end of the day. Um, and then reset, right? I think I shared it in, in the group. I had my goal to make $500 at each of my three events this month. Well, unfortunately, I didn't make it there. So I've reset and found other ways to make that back. So I started reaching out to people. I got some online orders to make up for that 500 and I booked another event to, to try to, to recoup my, my loss there. So instead of looking at as a flop, you've got to try to find a positive in it. And how many people did I talk to? And that's 50 more people than I talked to yesterday. So don't wait for something good to come, create your own good news story coming out of something that maybe wasn't what you expected. I love that. Okay, we have three minutes. If everyone could quickly share a takeaway, something they want to try or run with, something that they pulled from this, share it. Go. I'm going to go with the less is more on my table. Like I do like to put a lot of stuff on my table, but right now for this season catalog, I have everything that's available minus the cookware and stuff. Um, it's a lot to lug and I don't want to keep lugging all, but I'm going to not have everything, but focus more on the new stuff and the faves. Awesome. I love that. Mine's going to be make it personal. So, you know, Cassandra's pictures of herself with the, the drink and the you know, suggestion for the kids with the wings. That's going to be mine. I'm going to put stuff of, of me out there, right? Make it, make it personal. That's what I was going to say kind of too. I love that digital idea with the, um, the digital frame. I had actually kind of was been thinking about a projection thing, like a little movie going on in the background even. So um, that kind of, says yeah maybe I should go for that <laughs> yeah. um but yeah definitely um keep those connections that you're at the events and and that's a good takeaway as well for me it's yeah I love the digital uh, frame idea and focusing on nice little areas like the margarita station uh and like zoning in on seasonal products I like that idea yeah, like even have like a, a cup, like, you know, the, how they do those fancy cups, but they look real, like something like that just brings your table to life. Right. And I, yeah, I'm just going to run with all your guys's ideas. And I just show you this last one that I just did. Like, I know it looks corny with my, myself on there. No, it doesn't. It I just, love that. Like, you're not, I don't know. Like, I just feel like it's me at the booth. This is me, you know? So I just like, kind of, I don't know. Yeah. Kind of. I don't know. That looks like a magazine Yeah, I would I join your it. team. I would join your, your team just from that. It's picture. my own. Yeah. Can you Photoshop my head on your back and send that to me? I love that. <laughs> I we have all have picture. the same one with just our own faces. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I have a, I just figured out how to do like how to cut out the whole, well, I know there's apps to cut out backgrounds and stuff, but it's very easy on iPhone. If anybody has an iPhone, that's where I'm doing all this. So anyways. I'll be quiet because we've probably went over our time. No, so thank you. Ladies. That was awesome. Yeah, so much fun. That was a quick hour. I thought, yeah, it'll be about half an hour today. No, thank you for all of the sharing. I can't wait uh, to run with this. And yeah, if anyone has anything they want to share document wise, um, post it in our org group. You can use like hashtag vendor event. That way it's easy to find. Like if you have your own ballot or you have graphics that you use at your table, it would be awesome if you could share um, any wins or anything or a photo of your vendor event. Um, yeah, get posted in our org group and it'll ruffle some feathers, but I'm going to get this recording up and I'll put that in the group later on today. Thank you Thanks so much. Jenna, look. Oh my god. I got my mittens. Oh. <laughs> I got back on Friday from Toronto and they were in my mailbox. I was so happy. It just made my day. So thank you so much. You're so welcome. That's awesome. All right, everyone. Have an awesome day. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.